In the book of Acts, chapter 10, a Roman centurion named Cornelius sees a vision telling him to send for the apostle Peter. When Peter shows up, Cornelius, who apparently doesn't know any better, bows down and worships him. But Peter tells him, stand up, I too am just a man. Peter knows that this centurion shouldn't be worshiping him, so he tells him to stop. A few chapters later, in Acts 14, the Apostle Paul is preaching, and a man who has never walked is completely healed. The people of the city think that Paul and Barnabas must be gods, so the priest wants to sacrifice an animal to them. Paul and Barnabas go nuts. They tear their clothes, run into the middle of the crowd, and say, in verse 15, Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of the same nature as you, and preach the gospel to you, that you should turn from these vain things to a living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. So, don't worship us, worship God. In Revelation 22, the Apostle John is talking to an angel, and he's so overwhelmed that he bows down to worship the angel. The angel says, in verse 9, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours, and of your brethren the prophets, and of those who heed the words of this book. Worship God. According to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, these would be appropriate responses if someone tries to worship you. If you're walking down the street and someone starts to bow down to you, probably a good time to say, hey, what are you doing there? You're not worshiping me, are you? In the Gospels, lots of people worship Jesus. And if Jesus is just a prophet, as Muslims believe, we can expect him to react the same way that Peter, Paul, Barnabas, and the angel reacted, right? Let's turn to the text. In Matthew 2, wise men from the east learn that Jesus has been born, so they search for Jesus and find him in Bethlehem. Here's what happens. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. They fell to the ground and worshipped him. No one tells them to stop, but Jesus was a baby, so let's skip ahead to adulthood. In Matthew 14, Jesus' disciples see him walking across the Sea of Galilee. At first they think he's a ghost, but Jesus says, no, it's me. In verse 28, we read, Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped, and those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are certainly God's Son. They worshipped him, saying, you are certainly God's Son. The disciples worship Him and call Him God's Son, but it never occurs to Jesus to tell them to stop. It's kind of odd for a prophet not to care that people are worshiping Him, isn't it? Let's go to John 9, where Jesus gives sight to a man born blind. The man gets kicked out of the synagogue for believing in Jesus after Jesus heals him. And starting in verse 35, Jesus heard that they had put him out, and finding him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, so that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Jesus doesn't seem to have any problem with this man worshiping him. 
Shortly before his execution, Jesus enters Jerusalem and goes into the temple where children start shouting praises to him. The priests rightly recognize that they're giving Jesus honor that belongs only to God. Here's the exchange in Matthew 21 verses 15 to 16. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself? It's easy to miss what Jesus is claiming here. Children are praising him in the temple. Hosanna to the son of David. The son of David is the Messiah. The priests go to Jesus and say, Do you hear this? This is a place for praising God, and they're praising you. And Jesus quotes Psalm 8-2, which is about Yahweh receiving praise from infants instead of from the adults who reject him. So the priests are saying, Jesus, tell them to stop praising you like you're God. And his response is, why would I tell them to stop praising me? They're supposed to praise God. Jesus is also worshipped by women. After he rises from the dead, a group of women visit the tomb where they learn from an angel that Jesus is alive. What happens next? Matthew 28, verses 8 to 9. They left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. They took hold of his feet and worshipped him. A little later, Jesus appears to the rest of his disciples. Matthew 28, beginning at verse 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So they worship Jesus, but instead of informing them that he's just a prophet, Jesus instead claims that he has all authority in heaven and on earth, and that his followers are to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus' followers continue worshiping him even after he ascends to heaven. In Luke 24, 50-53, we read, And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they, after worshiping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising God. Jesus is worshipped as a child. He's worshipped during his three-year ministry. He's worshipped after his resurrection, but before his ascension to heaven, and he's worshipped after his ascension. Why did Jesus accept worship? He tells us in John 5, verses 22 to 23, where he says, For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Notice what we have here. God the Father and God the Son. The Son judges the world so that everyone will honor the Son the same way they honor the Father. One of the ways we honor the Father is through worship. And Jesus says we have to honor the Son in the same way. If we don't worship Jesus, we're not honoring the Father. If this is a mere human being, he can't be a prophet, because no prophet of the Almighty would say that we have to honor him the same way we honor God. But if Jesus is the divine Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, 
Well then, it makes perfect sense for him to demand worship and for his followers to worship him, as they do over and over again in the pages of the New Testament and as we're doing even today.